Sweden, a country of great beauty and natural resources. Forests, mountains, lakes, and vast areas of untouched wilderness. The Swedes are a people that have made themselves known for many reasons and in many different ways. One of which was when they set out for the world in the 11th century. Since then, we have learned the strength of Swedish steel. Swedish ore is world famous, as is the well-developed forest industry. The demand for Swedish know-how and for Swedish products has greatly increased. Swedish glass and handicraft has reached worldwide fame. Now we have refined the glass, the expertise and the handicraft even further. Today we are one of the world leaders in fiber technology for telecommunications. People around the world communicate by way of Ericsson's cables. Thus, Swedish expertise and quality is confirmed. In 1870, the British inventor Tyndall proved that light could follow a deflected jet of water. This is the principle behind the fiber optic cable. In 1887, Alexander Graham Bell experimented with speech transmission through light. With his photophone, he could transmit speech approximately 200 meters. The laser invention was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1964. All the necessary elements were there. What remained was to combine the function of the laser and the property of glass. Ericsson Cables started early on to develop, manufacture and handle cables in various communication links. They were among the first to develop glass fibre optics. This is what a submarine fibre optic cable made by Ericsson Cables in Hudiksvall looks like. From an approximately one metre long preform of glass, a fibre is drawn. The fibre can be up to 90 kilometres long and have a diameter of 125 microns. Each fibre is coloured for identification. Four variously coloured fibres are put together and encapsulated in acrylate to form a four fibre ribbon. The slotted core has several slots, which allow one or more ribbons in each. The slots are filled with a filling compound to prevent water penetration. The slotted core with the ribbons is jacketed with polyethylene. The fiber optics are measured regularly during production. The cable core is sealed with an 0.4 millimeter thick copper coating to prevent water and hydrogen penetration. The jacket is formed after the copper band has been trimmed. The seam is welded under a microscope, followed by a check for possible cavities. Then the jacket is shrunk. Ericsson's research on eco-friendly materials has resulted in the usage of copper jackets instead of lead jackets. A jacket of plastic is applied over the copper before the armoring machine begins to twist the reinforcement steel. The armoring can be single or double. It consists of galvanized steel wires in varying diameters, depending on customer demands 
and the tensile strength that is required. The armoring is sealed with a bitumen compound. The work at Ericsson Cables is carried out by goal-oriented teams that are responsible for product planning, specifications, machinery maintenance, quality and training. Within the teams, the tasks are rotated as a means of increasing motivation and to raise the overall quality of the work. After a wrapping, hot melt glue is added to keep the yellow plastic yarns in place. The yarns form the outermost surface of the finished cable. On the shop floor, constructors, salesmen, process technicians and buyers work together with the goal-oriented teams. One black yarn is placed together with the yellow. It is used as a reference to see the cable's movements in the water at installation, repair or other actions. The finished submarine cable, as coiled in the factory, could look like this. Slotted core, fiber optic ribbons, layer of polyethylene, copper jacket, one or two steel armorings, plastic yarn. The cable leaves the factory on rollers and can be loaded onto railway carriages for further transportation. It can also be delivered, in shorter lengths, on drums like this to different parts of the world. The natural way is, of course, to transport the cable by boat. Here we see the CS Playle, owned by Telia, transporting the cable to Copenhagen for loading onto the Danish cable vessel, CS Mersk Defender, which will lay the cable. Ericsson Cables has once again produced and distributed cables with matching networking products for telecommunication. Installation can begin. They start in Koopczyk, Poland, a few kilometers from the famous fortress and lighthouse. Here, many nationalities work together with Ericsson. All have different specialities. There are Swedes, Danes, Poles and Norwegians. A few kilometers offshore, the Mesh Defender feeds the cable as it is slowly pulled to land by a tractor. The cable arrives and will later be buried approximately one meter deep in the sand. This is the starting point of a cable more than 170 kilometers long across the Baltic Sea. Ericsson, who has chosen to work very closely with the customer, follows the work with the cable and gives instructions. The disturbed areas of land are restored very thoroughly according to agreement. The jointing to the land cable from Korpschek can begin. Naturally, each fiber and joint is regularly controlled, both ashore and on board the cable ship. The cable is buried approximately 70 centimeters into the seabed to avoid possible damage from anchoring, fishing or dumping. When one works closely with the customer, it's easy to get new ideas about product development and to propose and give the customers the solutions they need. This creates growth. And the installation continues towards Bornholm at a speed of up to 3,000 meters an hour. 
and exactly on the course that has been decided on the basis of the route survey. The cable arrives at Bornholm, where it will meet another international cable from Gedser in Denmark. The cable laying continues towards Sweden. Ericsson Cables also collaborates with select suppliers in many areas as a way of creating a partnership that will strengthen the competitiveness of both parties. After nine days from Poland, it's time to cut away and bring ashore the cable at Istad in Sweden. People and new technologies are coming ever closer. At Ericsson's application laboratories, they work full out for a shrinking of the world and for an increase in international communication and understanding. Ericsson produces products that only a few years ago were non-existent and the rate of change is increasing constantly. This creates flexibility. What does a cable mean? It's a link for computers, faxes and human communication. It might mean that the renowned Polish artist Irena Szmalek from Koobczek can immediately convey her art to Sweden and Denmark and further out in the world. Or that Fritjof Nielsen's The Pirate can be transubstantiated in an entirely new way and conveyed to many interested readers or simply that Niels and Linda can talk for hours on end. A committed leadership and cooperation built upon mutual trust between an individual and a business. Swedish quality and tradition, together with a collective participation in the work, has led to a swift and reliable development. Steel, forest, glass, opto-cables, all this adds up to Swedish quality.